Bar Rescue has seen its fair share of heated moments, but sometimes things escalate to a whole new level, even ending up getting physical. Just like this time when even Taffer's crew were at risk of getting roughed up. Yeah, I'm coming out swinging with this crazy episode. So, John Taffer paid a visit to Artful Dodger in Huntington, New York, owned by a guy named Mike Conforti. You see, Mike used his savings to buy the nightclub back in 2006 after losing his sales job. And I think he did the right thing, because Artful Dodger was one of the first bars in the area to have DJs and dancing. And it was a hit for the first five years. These little holes. Mike even boasted about monthly sales reaching a whopping $50,000 at one point. And trust me, in this industry, that's a lot of money. But as the dance scene in the neighborhood grew, Mike's lack of health and safety standards drove customers away and straight to the competition. I mean, just take a look around this place. Would you want to eat and drink here? Yeah. Me neither. In 2011, Mike hired a nightclub promoter named Brian Gordon to help boost sales, and they decided to change the name from Artful Dodger to Radio. They even tried an 18 and over promotion gimmick. They are kind of like policing the place. But guess what? It didn't quite work out. Brian blamed the bar's rundown appearance for turning customers away. And, I mean, he's not wrong. Now, Huntington is a pretty well-off area, with a median income of around $116,000, double the national average. However, Artful Dodger looking the way it did wasn't gonna attract the wealthy locals anytime soon. John Taffer, who's probably brought back places in worse condition than this by now, brought in service pro Jesse Barnes and bartender extraordinaire Phil Wills to lend a helping hand. John and his experts decided to check out the other bars in the area to see how busy they were. And guess what? They were all packed. Hi, Gloria. Very nice to meet you, John. How long have you been open? For about eight months. Turns out, Artful Dodger was the only one struggling to make money. So, John decided to take matters into his own hands and brought in 100 people to give Artful Dodger a second chance. And boy, was it a disaster. I've got people drinking bugs and an owner that's not doing anything about it. The bar was absolutely filthy, with flies buzzing around and even going for a dip in the customer's drinks. The next day, for the stress test that night, John decided to make it an 18 and overnight, with black X's for those under 21 and pink wristbands for the legal drinkers. He brought in a 23-year-old girl and instructed her to pretend that she was 18 to see if she could order a cocktail. How'd that go, you ask? Well... They come up so easily. This is a joke. I'm sure girls do this all the time. Yeah, she wiped off the X without anyone noticing. And if it was that easy for her, imagine what a bunch of actual teenagers would be able to do. More on that later. Now, as the plan continued, John sent Mike to check for people with drinks, but without wristbands. But to their disappointment, the plan failed miserably. Wondering why? Just take a look at this. Sorry. That's just ridiculous, isn't it? How on earth could someone not notice an underage girl drinking right in front of them? Now, maybe, maybe he didn't see her hands. Fair is fair, I guess. But take a look at what happened next. How you doing? She's even talking to the owner and he didn't notice the drink. Yeah, talk about irresponsibility. They literally talked like nothing was wrong, but the owner's face expressed it best. It was like, nah, I don't care, as long as your money's good. Like, even the bouncer didn't step in. That drink was in her hand for over 41 minutes, and nothing? Come on, big guy. And if I'm over here getting mad years after the fact, you can imagine how much John's blood was boiling. So he gathered the owner and the manager to give them a piece of his mind. And after everything that went down in such a short time, there was only one thing left to do. Pull the plug for the night. But trying to pull the plug only made things worse. And chaos ensued as the teenagers went wild. I mean, what the actual heck was happening here? So many underage guys got drunk without the owners noticing, but that's not even the half of it. Since one girl tried to fight John's cameraman. Oh man, you wouldn't believe the kind of comments that poured in after the episode aired. 
trust me, some of them were absolutely hilarious. Let me quickly give you a taste of a few that caught my attention. One person said that things were so wild that probably the cameraman was still running to this day. Another user pointed out how this drunk chick asked the cameraman to get out of her face and then ended up chasing him right behind his back instead of, you know, going the other way. But seriously, this whole thing was a huge disaster. Artful Dodger was in serious need of a rescue, and John Taffer had his work cut out for him. But in this next episode, we were witness to a bar rescue first. Stay tuned, guys, because things are about to get real fiery in Russell City Grill and Sports Bar in Hayward, California. The owner, Lee Bellet, was a construction worker who inherited some cash from his mom and decided to buy the bar back in 2014. At first, business was booming, making around 50 grand a month with zero competition in the area. But guess what? Lee had zero experience running a bar, and it showed. The place had gone downhill ever since, and the staff couldn't care less about their jobs. Y'all wanna crack all these ass jokes? Can a bitch at least get a dollar? What's crazy is they didn't even have proper tools or inventory. And the worst part is that there was no professionalism between the staff. It had to have been more toxic than a high school clique. I didn't have an attitude. That's the whole thing. I didn't have an attitude in the front. You sit here and you act like a bitch. And speaking of cliques, some real drama went down after Lee's so-called friends took advantage of him and got free drinks. While they might have been having fun, all they did was destroy what little reputation the bar still had. I mean, what even is this? No, I don't like church. Him and I have had a conflict. One dude, Church, took things to a whole new level by going behind the bar, making his own drinks, and getting into fights with the staff. So, yeah. Not the kind of place you'd want to bring your friends. Lee's nightmares weren't limited to what his friends were getting up to. He was also drowning in debt. He borrowed over a hundred grand from his dad, and his total debt ballooned to over $280,000. So, John Taffer, along with an expert bartender and chef, showed up in order to figure out what was going on. The bar was located on some prime real estate, but it looked just as bland as the surrounding buildings. Nothing screams, come in and have a good time, to potential customers. And don't even get me started on the staff, they were a total disaster. They were taking shots with church, cursing at customers, goofing off, and doing this instead of their jobs. Just gonna... Now, don't forget that these were their working hours, so if the staff chills, who's gonna make money to pay the bills? What's more, thanks to the gross mismanagement and lack of leadership, the kitchen was in an absolutely sorry state. Disgusting. Yep, that's the cook working in a filthy kitchen complete with a leaking grease trap. Man, sometimes you think you've seen it all on this show. But here's the real kicker. Just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, Josie, one of the bartenders, served raw chicken to a customer. And if that wasn't headache enough, Church was back to his antics and gate crashed the bar without any permission whatsoever. This was making both employees and customers alike uncomfortable and irritated. But instead of being all hands on deck to fix the situation, look what Lee was up to. He was playing pool like it was no big deal. <sighs> Fiddling while Rome burns. However, one of the bartenders was not holding back because this happened. I don't even know why church is here. He doesn't even work here. <sighs> wow, that got heated pretty quick. Glasses smashing, stuff getting knocked off tables. If I didn't know any better, I think we were on some sort of a wild sitcom. But no. This was real life, and these were real people. And real customers got hurt when they tried to help and stop the fight. And it kept getting worse. Look at him! Oh my god! Even though Church was banned from the place, the bartender was the one who got fired. A ton of viewers were baffled by this decision, because he was a trustworthy employee. Probably the best one they had, too. And he was 100% in the right here. He actually fought with Church because he was fed up with him crossing the line time and time again. Talk about words falling on deaf ears, but this guy, the bartender, I really hope he found a far better place to work in. I mean, he signed up to work at a bar, not a circus. Speaking of circuses, let me show you the most unsafe bar ever featured on the show. Taffer is gonna be walking the tightrope here. 
At least figuratively. John Taffer rolled up to Undisputed Sports Bar and Grill in Yonkers, New York. The bar was co-owned by Miguel Torres, a former boxer, and his buddy Brian O'Shea. Back in the day, this place was a sensation, with their cool boxing theme pulling in loads of dough, about 50 grand a month. But soon, things took a nosedive. Brian got too carried away with the bar's success and turned it into his personal party central. That sent customers packing, and the place got buried under a whopping $120,000 in debt. The staff's morale hit rock bottom and Miguel and Brian's friendship was hanging by a thread. So they turned their bat signal to the sky and called in Bar Rescue, the superheroes for bars in trouble. John Taffer came to the rescue, rolling in with his expert bartender, Russell Davis, and top chef, Aaron McCargo. But before they could get to work, they sent in some undercover spies to scope out the sorry state of the joint. Undisputed sports bar and grill might look all right with its 1,500 square feet, two speed wells, and full-service kitchen, but inside, it was a hot mess. Damn, the fridge was left wide open, the wings were a disaster, and guess what the owner was doing? Yeah, having his beer. At least Miguel was walking around, showing his face. He's got Brian sitting at the end of the bar. Brian was drowning his sorrows right there at the bar. Tough gig, buddy. But soon, things got heated between the owners. Talk, talk, talk. No, no work. And the situation reached a boiling point when Miguel's wife intervened. Come on, man. With tensions brewing, John decided to step in and lay down the law. Turns out, behind the scenes, Brian had been filling up pricey bottles with cheap booze. And by this time, John had seen enough and was ready to drop the hammer. Do you want me to walk out of here? To you, okay, I need to and you better be straight with me. And guess what? Even the experts were pissed as hell. As the night went on, things got even crazier, if that was at all possible, and a full-on fight broke out between the customers. Yeesh, talk about a bar brawl. John's crew got caught up in the chaos and took a beating. The next day, John rounded up the staff and Miguel's wife, Tanya, who didn't hold back. She hated the bar and blamed Brian for being a slacker. Jenny, a former employee, added fuel to the fire, revealing she quit because she felt like she was in danger working there. Later, when John asked if anyone, anyone at all, felt safe, not a single hand went up. Finally, Brian owned up to being responsible for that unsafe atmosphere, and trust me, had it not been for John's intervention, things probably would have taken a darker turn. Yikes, I don't even want to imagine it. But this next bar owner was brazen enough to take a huge step over the line, right in front of John. Fat boy! You disrespectful son of a bitch! Well, this episode of Bar Rescue is called Empty Pockets. Couldn't come up with a better title if I tried. You see, Zanzibar, a bar owned by Ami Benari in Denver, was the owner's dream come true. At least for a time. Ami, who used to be in the Israeli army, moved to the US looking for a better life, which is when he decided to open Zanzibar in 2009. Initially, the bar was a hit and made around $450,000 a year. Not too shabby at all. But then things took a turn for the worse, and the bar started going downhill. Not at all. Like, Not a single person no to talk to. Yeah, we could play all night, but that's what five-year-olds do. 2011, Ami had a serious accident and had to step away from the bar for a while. During that time, the staff's behavior made matters worse, driving the bar into the ground. $10 for you, okay? Who's next? Customers stopped coming in, and the place was in trouble. Six months before filming, Ami returned to the bar, fired his senior staff, and hired a new team. But unfortunately, the damage was done. The bar was now on the verge of closing down for good, which is why he made a desperate call to Taffer and his team to come around and help rescue the bar. John brought in Smirnoff master bartender Jenny Costa and expert chef Brian Duffy to help with recon. They also sent in two college students, Nick and Kamio, as spies. Zanzibar was a billiards bar with 10 pool tables and 8 beers on tap. During the recon, they noticed something crazy. The staff was overpouring drinks and giving away freebies to customers and friends. When John stormed in, he found the kitchen in a terrible state, with the chef coughing into his hand right before touching the food. 
John was furious and berated the staff for overserving at the bar and contaminating the kitchen. The cook, Dave, who desperately needed to keep his job, offered to stay up and clean the place. The following day, John saw some improvement in the kitchen, but Ami was upset when he learned how much money he'd been losing due to overpouring. In frustration, Ami lost it. And look what he did next. Continued to throw plates against the wall. You know, I want to remind him that he's wasting his own money here, but something tells me it's not the right time. Meanwhile, John and Chef Brian Duffy worked with the staff to improve their pouring techniques. During the stress test, things totally went haywire, with the staff still over pouring and running out of clean glasses. There's no glassware. I have to jump in and make drinks, but there's no glassware. There was no point continuing with the stress test, and so John decided to shut it down and called Ami totally useless. This led to a heated exchange where Ami even tried to swing at John. They should have thrown me I ran out of glasses. I did not know. I could not be everywhere. The absolute nerve of this guy. I mean, John was only here to help him, and that's how he repays him. But you know what? That wasn't all. Wait till you see what happened next. Fuck you have no idea what you're doing. Don't talk to me, I'm busy. You've got to be kidding me. This was one of those times where even the experts couldn't control their anger. Don't believe me? Take a look at this. Six hey, checks. You entire kitchen. Fat boy. John lost his cool when Ami continued to body shame the experts. So he decided to stand up for him. Several viewers appreciated John for defending his team, and even went to the extent of crowning him the boss of bars. Damn, what a crazy episode. But the things that went down at all of those other bars pale in comparison to what's coming next. The arguments here were so heated that you could have fried an egg on the counter. We're talking about the End Zone Sports Bar and Grill in Houston, Texas. The restaurant was owned by Justin Whitfield, who used to be a bodybuilder and also a stripper. He opened the sports bar back in 2005, and it was actually doing pretty darn well, making around $100,000 a month. But you know, running a bar can be a real pain, so Justin brought in his buddy Sean to help out, and that's when everything started going down the tubes. These people have taken from me, they've lied to me, they've stolen from me. These two didn't get along at all. And to make matters worse, Justin allowed the bartenders to drink while they were working, which added even more fuel to the fire and turned the staff into a bunch of bickering maniacs. Fast forward a bit, and the owners were saddled with over $200,000 in debt. Ouch. John brought in his experts, Chef Vic Vegas and mixologist Kate Gerwin, to check out the place. Last time we were here, it was one of the messiest disgraces of a kitchen that we ever seen. They noticed that the bar was in a great location near lots of sports stadiums, but the exterior was in shambles. Plus, the name didn't do it any favors. Yeah, it'd probably be my end if I didn't have any other choice but to come here. Anyway, to gather intel, John sent in some people on undercover, JT, John, and Lori, to scope out the place. They ordered some drinks, and let me tell you, they were so gross and sour that they had to send them back. The food wasn't any better, thanks to the messy and unsanitary kitchen run by Kevin. To say that there ain't even a sign of a cockroach, a grasshopper, no dirt. Kevin was using his bare hands to handle the meat like it was a damn wrestling match. Oh, and let's not forget about the bartender. Kiana was caught drinking behind the bar and dropping F-bombs in front of the customers. Real classy, huh? As if that wasn't enough, out of nowhere, a bunch of male strippers showed up and started performing. Uh, guys, this was supposed to be a sports bar, not a strip joint. O okay, you can stop now. But wait, it gets better. Justin decided to join the show, shirtless and all. Can you guess what happened next? Yep, disgusted customers started walking out. And who can blame them? Things then went from bad to worse when Stephanie, Sean's wife, and Dana, Justin's wife, got into a full-on cat fight. Oh, the drama. Sean was so fed up, he bursted into tears and went on a rampage before demanding that Justin fire Taylor, one of the bartenders. The situation was so out of control that John decided not to meet the owners that night. I mean, can you blame him? People were totally losing their minds in there. Can't blame a guy for not wanting to walk into that minefield. You know, I've got a better name for the end zone up my sleeve. The end of the line. 
So, these are some of the times it got physical on Bar Rescue. Now, I'm sure it's gotten even more heated and even more violence, so hit me up in the comments below if I left out your favorite Bar Rescue bar apocalypse. Also, don't forget to join me on my channel's Discord server, where we can go at length discussing some crazy times on the show for free. And for those of you who want a little extra, I got an exclusive server just for you. But before you head out, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was crazy, don't forget to check out this next post right here. It's even crazier.